commuting, and here we go. Hello everyone, McCall here, and thank you all for tuning in to the next episode of Starbase, uh, the Cerberus Station, Star Trek Adventures game. Uh, those of you currently watching on Twitch may notice that there is a bit of a different station showing up. That is because, as a bit of a palate cleanser, I have decided to take us into the Mirror Universe. My players are coming whether they like it or not. Most of them seem to like the idea. So we're just going to have some fun and see what happens this time around. Uh, no announcements on my side. Uh, we're just going to get right into this. So, uh, you are on refueling station C3R. Roughly 100 years old, this station sits in the Alpha Quadrant at the Argolis Nebula and acts both as a mining and ref a mining station and a refueling a refining station and a refueling station offering deuterium and dilithium to passing trade to passing ships and and they're not really picky on who they sell it to uh, the station has not undergone um, a lot of modifications in the last hundred years and its age is showing um, the Terran Empire has been reformed into or into a slowly growing galactic commonwealth and most of the imperial loyalists have either been um, taken into custody or have gone into the wild spaces and started um, miniature empires of their own and this is roughly where your refueling station is too far away from the galactic commonwealth for them and their pesky laws to be of much of a concern and just possibly a little too close to some of these uh, conflicting um, miniature empires for for you to be too complacent in uh, mirror in this area of space well the only rules are the ones you make <clears throat> it is roughly six o'clock it is approaching six o'clock in the morning and being the um, current senior staff on board it is time for your morning briefing with the station's administrator B Bernie Jail uh, you are all brought into, or right at six, you are all brought into the meeting room on board this aging station. Comfort is not uh, the watchword of this particular meeting room. Very functional chairs, um, not an ounce of carpet to be found, uh, bare metal, and not enough light to really see by. Bernie Jail is the fattest Pejoran, or no, nope, sorry, the fattest Beta Z you have ever seen. Um, he is roughly 450 pounds, and the doctor would have accurate medical records to show him actually on the other side of 500. Uh, he gets around in a hover chair similar to Professor X, yet not as gracefully. <clears throat> Wherever he goes, he is accompanied by his and Dorian bodyguard slash captain's woman, uh, Zir. At six o'clock on the uh, at 0600 on the more on the button, he slams his hand heavily on a industrial metal desk, activating a uh, activating the station-wide alarm clock that is the anthem of the former Terran Empire and he stands with a huff and a puff and gives the sal gives the salute as the player or as the uh, song plays once the song ends he sits down and d he doesn't seem to care if you do if you stand or sit or what he's just wanting to get the day on right he gurgles through far too much fat and blubber this is yet another day I am here with you guys and he pulls up a t uh, pad of last uh, of yesterday's reports very well Kelvon I'm seeing here that two of our ships are taking 10% longer in the Argolis Nebula to mine how's that affecting price 
Well, luckily it hasn't affected the prices too much, but I think I might have to go on board the ship and talk to their captains to persuade them a little harder to make sure that they're getting things done in a timely manner. Right. Raise price, raise commodity prices 5% for the next 48 hours. That should cover the costs. Then some. Myth and at this point, Kelvin, what is your character? Could you describe your character, please? Well, my character, Kelvin, is a kind of gristled-looking Denobulan. Uh, he's definitely gotten his fair share of um, whips and lashes from the old Terran Empire, but every single beating has taught him to be a little more cunning, a little... Um, little sneakier about things he's very stands very tall straight back he just wears dark clothing just tries to have this air of i can't i can't think of the right word um impetuousness okay <laughs> all right he continues down the pad interrogator high long it appears that the sla that slave crew 39B is showing high levels of morale and a potential rebellious instinct. Find out who is stoking these fires and deal with them, please. And uh, Interrogator High Long uh, is a uh, actually a rather short uh, Serato Draco. Uh, interestingly, uh, her entire right side. Uh, so her arm, leg, etc., uh, are actually almost Borg-like in design, almost as if uh, someone got a little bit too mad scientist uh, in their zeal to help replace what probably was blown off limbs. Uh, but in any case, Interrogator High Long sort of, uh, you know, twirls her hair a little bit and says, "Ah, well, I actually am here to report, sir, that." That morale boost is intentional. We're using it to weed out would-be rebellion. He sort of scowls. Right. Next time, if you're planning a morale boost, please let me know. Next. Oh, but if I did that, sir, it would lose the point. His eyes narrow. He opens his mouth to what you th to speak something. Turns out he just starts breathing through it. Ah, either way. Doctor. And Inquisitor. We're getting a new shipment of slaves. Looks like Gorn this time. Find their leaders. And, both, and make sure they fall in line. But, Doctor, make sure that at least they are the 85% efficient effective after whatever you do to them. They're hard workers and they're tough bastards. I will only take out the redundant systems that you're not required to work. And Doctor, could you describe yourself, please? Uh, he is mostly covered in uh, metal plating, uh, some green and a little bit of red lighting around him. The only part that looks organic is his face. Everything else is metallic. He's not even in uniform because he doesn't care. All right. But his appearance seems to be somewhat human. Fair enough. Slave trader ship is scheduled to be here at eight at oh eight hundred hours, Mister Elias. Uh, because we're dealing with Gorn, I fully expect your best guards on duty at this time. Will this be a problem? Don't you worry about that. I'll take care of everything. I'm the administrator. It's my job to worry. And already he's getting so heated up and uh, passionate about what he's saying is he's already breaking into a warm sweat. Uh, Mr. Elias, what do you look like? Uh, Zyler Elias is approximately six foot, human, um, pretty stocky, knows his way around pretty much any kind of weaponry. And Mr. Mr. Kellen, he 
as uh, Bernie rotates his chair to look at the last member of the senior staff. What the hell is going on in refinery plant C? Def I'm seeing that its output has dropped 70%. And if I, I swear if you'd put this on your incompetent engineering team again. Well, it's not necessarily an incompetent engineering team, but incompetent parts when you've been using the same parts in disrepair for about a century, it's going to happen. So what you're telling me is that I'm not doing a good enough job ensuring that this station is fully running, providing it with proper parts? Well, I can make it work if we maybe... And he'll put, like, air quotes, borrow some parts from the ships that are coming in, if we can do that. Mr. Kelvin, put some... See if we can't negotiate some parts from ships in exchange for a slight reduction in uh, fuel costs. I might have to talk to with those miners out there that aren't producing well enough and maybe they might be willing to, you know, give a little for their incompetence. Good. In the meantime, Mr. Kellen, in, let's encourage your team. Have two of them repair the agonizer booth C and then stick them in it. Mr. Hi Miss Highlong, ensure that he does so. Oh, with pleasure, sir. And I look almost hungrily at him. Don't worry. I'll make sure it happens. Good. After your predecessor, Miss Yamato, fell into the processing plant and you took up her mantle, I've seen about a 5% performance increase. I was hoping for 10. But you're still yes, alive. Uh, so. <laughs> yes, it was quite a tragedy when that happened. Yes, he shakes his head almost uh, almost sarcastically and it's very hard for him for you to actually see any emotion in his face just because of all the flubber that's flapping around yes an absolute tragedy now <laughs> we're we are expecting 10 ships through the day they will all be refueled they will all pay their to all pay their tolls on time and we're not going to have any problems today. Am I right, lady and gentlemen? Of course. We'll take, will, care of what, we'll take care of what needs to be done. Good. Oh, now. yeah, I should probably describe what Kellen looks oh, yeah, like. I'm terribly sorry. I forgot to ask you that. Oh, I got caught up in that. perfectly okay. <laughs> uh, Jarn Kellen is a troll individual. Uh, probably stands about average high between, like, Five seven and five ten. Uh, he, you know, full face of hair, and the only thing that really stands out about him is you'll notice if anybody looks closely on the back of his neck, almost kind of a. Uh, for those who have seen like Ghost in the Shell, has like what almost looks like plugs in the back of his neck, because he likes to try and stay directly connected to the station if he can as best as you could yeah he nods uh, Bernie Jail once again nods ever so slightly makes a hrump sound as his belly gurgles well that's the meeting he tosses the pad absent mindedly to one of the bodyguards in the back corner who juggles it slightly before tucking it under his arm get to work I don't pay you guys to lollygag if you need me I'm going to be eating my breakfast, I'm going to be having my bath, and then I'll be in ops. Get out! Doctor will get up and quickly leave. Now, here's my quick question. Does the yes. Terran Empire have, like, basically like an equivalent of comm badges or something like that? Uh, the station would have a... Uh, sort of a comm insignia. Definitely not okay. Terran related, but you would have comm badges of some sort, yes. Okay. He'll just kind of tap whatever that would be on him. He'll just be like, 
Uh, this is Kellen to... Let's see here. Flipping down a list. Um, let's do... Uh, Mr. Rousseau and Mr. Reinhardt. Uh, go ahead and take care of... What was that uh, station that was broken that he listed? Agonizer C? Yeah. Uh, head down to Agonizer C and start repairing that. Now. You get a flurry of yes sirs and the comic gets cut. Excellent. All right. Bernie Jail and Zier wait for you all to exit. Uh, anyone putting up anyone wishing to stay behind? Nope. I'm not necessarily not at all. But I'm gonna be the last one to leave the room. Fair enough. Uh, always um, watchful Zier makes uh, Zier fixes you with her stern eyes. Her hands always um, either her hands are always close to her Ushan blades on her hips. She doesn't say a word, just making sure that you're leaving. As you do, Bernie Jail uh, begins to hover his way out and Zier follows dutifully beside him. So my qu now, where would you guys like to go? Or what would you guys like to do? This is primarily your episodes. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to head to my office and start looking over the notes of the new slaves. All right. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to be heading down to one of the experimentation labs I have. Ooh, interesting. Okay. I will be heading to my office so that I can start looking over the commodity trades that uh, Bernie was talking about and adjusting as needed and then getting ready to figure out where exactly those ships are that I'm going to have to pay a little visit to. Okay. Uh, Miss Hylong. Uh, she is going to drop by her own office, which is part like security chamber, whatever you want to call it. It's got cells, it's got a torture room, you know, right. standing amenities. Yep. Fairly close to uh, Zyler's office, I would think. But uh, what she's going there for is to pick up her Batleth, mm -hmm. and she is just going to go supervise Agonizer C's repairs. Okay. And Mr. Kellen. Um... He is also going to go and uh, just look over the repairs for Agonizer C. Okay. So we will have a go in engineering and have a scene between Miss Hylong and Jaren. Jaren, you're busy watching um, Reinhardt and who was it? Uh, Rochot. Rochot. Working away at fixing Agonizer C. In walks interrogator Hylong with her Batleth. Just interrogator. Yeah, Mr. Killen, tell me how is the agonizer repair coming along? Oh, um, they're making decent progress. And as decent. soon as you decent, you hear him you see him kinda like uh and then he'll just start barking orders at the two that are there. It's like Start working faster, I'll kick you in there and find two other engineering officers. They, after a quick of yes sirs, sorry sirs, they get back to work at double pace. Now, Mr. Kellen, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you appear to have two working hands, is that correct? Yes, I was planning on working on some of the repairs myself, but... Uh, I have other things to dirty my hands in. Right, right. The powers of management and all that. Uh, perhaps you didn't catch my meaning. And I, I use my Batleth as a pointing instrument. Why don't you help them? I'm sure the work would proceed much faster with three hands rather than two. <sighs> and he'll just kind of start giving his... He'll... It's still more supervising than anything else, but he will actually help with the repairs. Okay. 
the repairs take roughly 15 to 20 minutes. Turns out that it wasn't too um, distressed to begin with. Just several fuses had been overloaded from a recent um, interrogator's um, over-exuberance. Hmm. <laughs> and it's funny because once they're finished and before uh, Kellen can really give her, you know, a report, I say to all three individuals, well, that was lovely. Thank you, gentlemen, for your contributions. Now, Mr. Rochot and Mr. Reinhardt, I have something very important to tell you. Did you know that Mr. Kellen was going to have you repair this all by yourselves and then throw you into this? What do you say to that, gentlemen? There, uh, Reinhardt, who has been on the station long enough to know how things work, sort of had an accept, sort of a sad acceptance on his face. The um, Mr. Rousseau was quite surprised. Now, oh, come now, gentlemen, you must know that this was coming. But surely you feel this is unfair, am I right? No, absolutely, interrogator. We would I s we follow I orders, see. but there should be no punishment for following orders to the letter, should there not be? Hmm. And uh, what do you suggest we do to fix this problem? Uh, the two immediately start um, breaking out in the um, Imperium, or the uh, verbal form of the Terran Imperium salute, which is literally blame everybody but yourself. Uh, currently, they are attempting to yell at each other for broke for um, each other's poor maintenance practices. Um, eventually, if given enough time, they realize that this is all that they would work, be best to uh, stand together against management in this instance. And they begin. Can I make to... one suggestion? Yes. For Reinhardt, mm -hmm. he smashes her show's head into the booth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one way to solve things. Huh. Well, sir, that works for me. Reinhardt has been here longer. Therefore, after a bit of arguing, realizing that Rousseau's not going to back down, he's going to attempt to get violent. Let's roll 2d20 and see how this works out. <laughs> well, that's well enough. Um, Rousseau now has a... Uh, I have a massive uh, laceration on the tip on the on his forehead. It's beginning to bleed quite intensively, and he be knocks out unconscious. Um, I applaud your ingenuity there, Mr. Reinhardt. However, Mr. Kellen, it appears one of your workers has been injured in the line of duty. What do you say to that? Oh, it seems like. Let's see here. Looks like we might have some kind of opening in the medical facilities. Might have to pay a visit to our good doctor. Mm, why don't you take him there yourself? I'll be having a word with Mr. Reinhardt here. Of course, interrogator. And he'll... Is Rousseau still con... No, you said he was unconscious. Yeah, he's, uh, he's out. He'll just kind of not even with much care, just start, like, dragging him by the collar to the doctor. Uh, Miss and uh, Lieutenant Reinhardt begins... At first, he stands at uh, full out attention and proud of his actions, then realizing that your stare is not changing, begins to shake a little. I interrogator? Hmm... Now, let's talk about your, shall we say, predilection for violence. And you can sort of fade to black yeah. there as you switch scenes. Okay. All right. Everyone has gone to their respective offices, and enough time has passed. Who else would like a scene? The doctor is open. Yeah. Okay, doctor, you are in sick bay, where Mr. Kalen, Keelan, or I should say Experimentation 1, when your um, internal augments reports a proximity in the main med bay where Mr. Kellen is bringing in an unconscious Rousseau. So when he gets into the med bay, um, I'm guessing we have to go there and meet him, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Kellen hears a harpsichord being played somewhere off in the lab. Um, 
and in the, one of the dark corners there is a silhouette of something playing and it's all off key it's all off just by a note or two but it's keeping a pattern it's definitely a song and a few moments later the doctor walks in what happened uh he got injured on the job let's just say uh the interrogators taking care of who was responsible fascinating so um, uh do i just uh shove him in here pointing to that big tube yeah the tube is filled with different body parts <laughs> oh that's <Like>. fun <laughs> yeah different organs they're still functioning too they're all hooked up just lay him on the bed and i'll take a look at him when i get to him unless he's is he a vital for you right now uh, not necessarily. Uh, Rousseau wasn't one of the most well-performing of my officers, so he was expendable, for lack of a better way of putting it. Oh, then I shall work to improve upon him. And I'll go over and just scan this to see how bad the wound is. Uh, let's roll Insight Medicine. Difficulty of one. Because uh, I want to check to make sure that his brain's not damaged. Uh, would neurology apply? Neurology would work, yep. Yeah. Boo! <clears throat> so, it appears that uh, Mr. Rousseau has a very thick skull. Um, your one of your your diagnostic equipment must be uh, poorly aligned, as you're unable to det figure out what the heck is inside his head. At first, you think it might be a tribble, and then that doesn't seem logical. I just look at the readings for a second, and since Kellen's not over over my shoulder, I just close it quickly. I was like, "He'll be fine. He's rather simple, isn't he?" Uh has been since he's gotten onto the station. I'll tend to the wound, but there is a good chance he might have some swelling of the brain. I might have to operate. And that will probably be where you make your improvements, Doctor? Hmm. Possibly. Does he have any family? Uh. I think he's got a distant cousin somewhere, but his personnel file doesn't speak of any uh, direct family. Good. I don't need permission then to do some limb replacements. And he just kind of looks towards the tube that's filled with body parts. He'll straighten out when his head will turn to look at you. Like, window shopping? No. Just, I'm assuming that's what you would use for the limb replacement? No, these are my personal collection. Oh. And I'm assuming that this tube is filled with, like, body parts of all different kinds of species and such. Oh, yeah, big old clinging heart is the centerpiece right now. Gotcha. And it looks like you might have had the beginnings of uh, an organic android. He just looks at you for a second like, I wouldn't curse an artificial intelligence with a organic body. Oh, that's a fair point, Doctor. Well, if you need nothing any, eh, nothing else from me, I'll take my leave. Feel free. If I do need anything, I will collect. And of course. just give you the weirdest fake smile he could muster. And he just kind of gives, like, a weird smile back of, like, Right, and he just kind of walks out. And hi, long. I assume if he goes back to engineering, either a Reinhardt is gone, or there is a very bloodied corpse. Actually, uh, when you get back to uh, main engineering, you'd find that uh, High Long has promoted Reinhardt. Okay, cool. <laughs> the, uh, the moment Kilo would step out of Sec Bay. Uh, I'm immediately ejecting Rosha with a bunch of little uh, repair friends. 
Even though he's unconscious, he still screams. I have a very genuine smile at that. <laughs> okay. We... So, approaching the slave um, transfer time, we are going to be in the station's bar, known politely as The Hole. Not owned by a single operator, more like a family-run business, and the family is rarely around. The Hole is served by a mechanized serving bot that is usually in poor repair. And whoever is sent to repair it usually somehow gets a little extra drinks out of the deal. Now we see Mr. Kelvin sitting here working away at his numbers. And all of a sudden, Mr. Elias walks in. Fancy seeing you here, Elias. Is there anything I can do for you? No, just grabbing a quick drink before I have to go break some slaves. You're literally going to have to grab. This thing's been acting up again. <sighs> Can these engineers do anything right? I wouldn't know. I haven't persuaded one enough yet. Depends how important it is to you to whether you want to offer your own money up or not. That's asking a lot of me. However... Anyhow, the slaves. Anything good coming? Some really strong Gorn. Lift lots of things. Hopefully, uh, make sure that the processing goes by quickly. Just because we'll have more material to process coming in. Mm, Gorn. They're definitely hard to break sometimes. That should do us really well. They're only hard to break if you go at the wrong person. You just have to intimidate the right one right off the bat. Ah, uh, the old jailhouse maneuver. Hit the biggest, baddest one the first day and let the other ones cower in fear. Gotcha. Hurt to play a little dirty. Hit it where it hurts. Do you know this Captain Aragon over in the one ship? Um, I, what is the ship name here? The Connecticut? What kind of parochial name is that? Do you know this Captain Aragon? Seems like a real arrogant bastard. I've seen him up a few times. Never had any real contact with him. Although, if he's arrogant, you know, I could help you persuade for a price. Let me see if there's anything to do. Sometimes these Terrans are a little skeevy, in my opinion. No offense. None taken. I wasn't born there. I'm an old concerned. I would have no connection to them. Nevertheless, yeah, I think I might have to persuade this one because it seems like he's every so often almost the same amount deciding to not bring in enough stuff or take a little longer to bring things in. I think he's got something on the side. Well, in this part of space, it isn't too unheard of to have a little side business or rendezvous around. My guess is he has a secret cargo hold. I didn't think about that one yet. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to pay him a little visit. Thanks for your insight. Consider it a free gift. give free gifts very often. If it's free, I'll take it. Well, I better, since this pot is down, go raid the bar for a little drink before I go to visit the Gorn. I don't see a thing. And then Kelvin decides to stand up and 
starts heading towards the exit. Getting a little close to Elias, maybe to just kind of intimidate him by my me possibly invading his personal space, but not too close, whereas to actually physically bump him. Oh, I just stand there and stare at you the entire time. I just put on a slight, slight Denobulan grin, you know, the over-exaggerated one, just very slightly. And then I walk past you. As you walk, as soon as he clears the room, I'll just say under my breath, conniving little... Whatever. I'm just here for the money, till something better comes along. Around 8 o'clock, the slave ship arrives, as planned. And I'm assuming Mr. Elias is going to meet them. Who else is going to show up to meet the slaves? The doctor. Okay. You know, Calvin is going to be there, too, just to see a couple of these big burly Gorn. Okay, doctor. Okay. The uh, the ship is an old. It was once a. Yeah, it was at one point a Vulcan cylindrical cruiser that had been long since um, confiscated and gutted and refitted for maximum cargo for maximum organic cargo space. On schedule, it it docks at airlock five, and as the uh, refueling teams begin to work. The docking bay extends and out trump several um, heavily armored uh, humans and Andorians, all in full armor and all all fully masked. Uh, one um, human male uh, steps up to Mr. Elias and goes, "You're Elias." Depends on who's asking. I'm the captain of this cargo ship. We have some fresh cargo for you. Bring them out! Which one is considered the alpha? Hmm. You're in luck. He's the one who insisted on coming out first. Good. Uh, he, he shouts, bring them out, and there is the muffled shock of cattle prods, or something similar, in the hold of the vessel followed by the reptilian roar and hiss of several um, Gorn. A small fight breaks out on the ship. A couple human screams. There's the several... There's a flash or two of disruptor rifle fire. And the owner goes, Well, apologies. We're down to 146. Gorn was really hoping to make a profit on this. Oh, well. Bring the remains to my lab. Fine, but you're still paying full price for him. Acceptable. He hands the data pad to uh, Mr. Elias, as the Gorn are ha- are herded out without any dignity onto the uh, main entrance bay. Uh, several of your security officers are s- standing by with uh, a, a mishmash of disruptor pistols, phaser rifles. This station is not well stocked with uh, standardized weapons. Mr. Zyler, if I may make an example, please. Go ahead. I'm going to step forward. Uh, how many, uh, are there a good number of Gorn out here now? Ah, uh, yes, we're reaching about 30 have been pushed out into the main docking bay. Alright. And, uh... Which one is the alpha? Like, do I get pointed at them? Uh, the the captain of the ship makes a discreet nod and a gesture to the Gorn, who, while not the biggest, he does appear to be sort of the most um, perceptive of the lot. Uh, he's he his movements are a bit more controlled. He's not hissing or snarling as loudly, but he is definitely containing his rage and waiting for his moment to strike. I'm going to walk over towards him. Uh, I'm going to look to all the other Gorns. Mm-hmm. Welcome to your new life. Obedience 
will be rewarded. Disobedience. And as soon as I say that, I'm punching him as hard as I can in the throat. Hey, that's fun. Uh, roll, roll me, um, in this instance it would be because it says a planned strike rather than unbridled fisticuffs, I'll say roll control plus security. Difficulty of one. Actually, hell, I'll just say difficulty zero because he's manacled, shackled, and surprised. And this is with mean right hook, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's enough to hit. And that is six. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And that's vicious one, right? <laughs> that's vicious yes. one. Yeah. So there was a Gorn here. <sighs> Take it back, Gracie. So there. So I'll put my hand through his throat, mm -hmm. and I'll grab his tongue and pull it out through that hole. He's like, to my lab now. The... And as I shake my hand free, and I was like, understand and obey. What does obedience get you? They, there's a, a small hissing from the gourd that you just um, perforated. Um, as it, It's still alive long enough to realize what you've done to it, and the hissing is the air coming out of its, I think the medical term is improvised stoma, the hole in the throat. <laughs> it realizes what it's done and then if slowly like a balloon that has that is slowly losing air it, it, the body def the body sort of just collapses on itself the knees bang onto the hard metal deck and then the gorn alpha just sort of slumps like a sack of potatoes can i the rest of the gorn in the room to see if there's any of them that react or don't react like they knew it was going to happen, so it was a fake alpha. Uh, yeah, that would be a... Let's roll insight plus security, difficulty of two. And if you have xenopsychology or threat assessment, something like that would work here. I have composure. That's about as far as I could go. That's not enough, I'm afraid. Well, I rolled it. Where is it? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> oh, roll 20. Why? Why? There it is. Oh, okay, one success. Not enough, I'm afraid. Uh, the Gorn are... Several of them act or react fairly um, in a surprise manner, and many of them try to assume a defensive pose, which is very difficult for them to do based on the fact that they're shackled. Um, once they realize that their situation, most of them just become sullen and hiss at you. And the doctor... I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk down a line just smearing that blood along their chest. And I'm going to look to the uh, dead Gorn I just killed, take his remains to the experimental lab quickly. Uh, two of your orderlies, who seem to be new orderlies on a weekly basis are quick to um, approve, are quick to do the doctor's bidding. They know what happens and if they're inefficient. Thank you, Mr. Zyler. If any of them decide to show any signs of rebellious nature, please do not hesitate and give me a call. Why should you get all the fun? I like kidding. You cut the difference out between difference with me is I can patch them back up. You assume that I can't? Not effectively. We'll have to see. I'll give you that very fake smile. I'm just staring you down. Okay, would you two like to quit grab assing and let's take care of these slaves around here, thank you. Very well. You may proceed to collecting them. Okay. I'm going to call over to uh, one of my last little guys. It's like, Nurse Neelan, come here, please. Uh, she comes in and refuses to make eye contact. Yes, Doctor? 
I believe you have the micro implants, the explosives. Of course, Doctor. And she Good. brings out a jar. Do you know the typical location where we embed them? Same location for the Gorn. Yes, sir. Base of the skull, top of the spine. Mm-hmm. And she takes, despite the, despite her res refusing to make eye contact with you, you can see a little bit of a um, murderous smile underneath her, uh, from the base of her lips. Never got to operate on a Gorn before. I'm curious to see what they would, how they react with no anesthetic. Like all organics, they scream. Mm. She chuckles slightly. Never heard of nothing else. Story. Of course, I'll go. I'll go back to my lab now. I have a going to experiment on. Of course, doctor. And she continue. She uh, falls in line behind the security officers and the new slave train. <clears throat> I did not mean to kill him, but holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, killer. Step one, assert dominates. Step one, complete. Yeah. In this case, insert dominance. <laughs> so are we doing phrasing anymore? Or... <laughs> this is mere universe. I'm not sure phrasing was ever a thing. Oh no, it's always a thing. <laughs> it's uh... always implied. <laughs> uh... Okay. Who, who wants to be... Who wants to be next, and where do they want to go? Hmm. Right. If not, I will just pick a location and plop people there. Uh, I can give the report to um, our lovely com that all the uh, Gorn have been delivered. Sure. Inquisitor Highlong is on Ops. Is that ops observing the loyalty status of everyone? And let me get tokens in place. Over the somewhat watchful eye of Administrator Jail. I say somewhat because every now and then he has a habit of falling asleep. That's actually because of uh, blood pressure loss. Yeah. No, it's tryptophan. Yeah, you know, come on, he's falling asleep because he's eating too much. It's... Well, now. I mean, you're little not... column A, little column B. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> and then, Mister Elias comes on the bridge. Or ops, I thought I you were going to say brig there for a second. I mean, <laughs> it's not the same thing. Entirely possible. This station has a few of those too. I'm sure. I just walk up to him and extend a, the pad to him. From, uh, to Administrator Jail? Yeah. Mm. Jail snorts a bit, takes it. 145. Oh, the doctor kill... Oh. Inquisitor the doctor had to stay with two. Mm. Uh, yes, Administrator. The doctor just cost me the efforts of what could have been one of the more productive units in our slave tr in our slave deal I mean yeah we probably made a good example but see to it that the doctor refrains from over exerting his artificial nature on more fragile organics and kindly remind him of the loyalty device that I've planned, that I've paid to, well, remind him of the money I paid to have him here, and the additional expense that went into the loyalty device implanted into the base of his skull. I see, sir. And uh, how persuasive do you want me to be? He's an android. He'll respond well to. He responds well to facts. And I'd rather not detonate that EMP device damn thing cost me too much money to blow away on something like this. Still, he needs to be curtailed. And uh, I like to imagine that Hylong has like the Batleth still on her back MMO style, like she didn't ever go back and put it away, so I'm... she just 
I'm assuming that's part of her uniform at this stage. Really, it is. Uh, but she says, <laughs> as you wish, Administrator. And she gives like a bow, not a mock one, but at least somewhat of a respectful one, and then excuses herself from ops. See, Elias? And he nods back, that's loyalty. You're just a merc working for a paycheck. What will it my do? Lo my what? loyalties are to the people who pay me. This is what the Galactic Commonwealth has done. It's turned loyalty into mercenary. I swear, if I could get down there to Terra, I would dethrone the, pre the Prime Minister himself. By myself. I wouldn't need anyone. At all. Because I am Bernie Jail, and I am... <gasps> and you can't move to get out of the chair. Mm. You young whippersnapper. I swear I will... And at this point, Zir places a calming hand on her on his shoulder and that seems to sort of relax him ever so slightly and she just looks at you smiles ever so slightly and nods her head I am loyal to you as long as you keep paying me what we have agreed I'm starting to think you might be overpriced get out as you wish, and I bow so sarcastically and big in front of him before I leave. As as uh, you catch the elevator, because this station's too not functional enough to have a working turbolift system anymore, <clears throat> you hear him mutter to Zir, maybe we could have the doctor clone Hylong, get some more loyalty around here. Sir, if there were two Highlongs, they'd probably out... They would probably out-suspicion one another, and they would both kill each other. Yeah, but imagine how good they'd be for that week that they were both alive. Okay. I believe Miss Highlong is going to go see the Doctor? Yep. All right. The Doctor, currently in um, medical examination room... B. That's the wrong room. This is the right room. <clears throat> you walk in and you, there's the sound of power tools um, cutting through wet flesh as you enter. The smell is quite putrid. I'm working on reviving the Gorn. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, when you have a moment... He'll stop for a second and look at the life signs. Can I try, try and revive him? Um, are you? I'm assuming because he lacks a larynx and any sort of airway. How are you wishing to revive him? Well, you know, some little experimental procedure, little uh, column A, column B of uh, experiment technology. Um, you played uh, Knights of the Old Republic, right? Oh yeah. Darth Malak up his throat. <laughs> oh, fun. Okay. <laughs> It's only been an hour, so let's see how far you've got. Um, roll me... Let's roll me daring plus either engineering or medicine, whichever one you see fit. Difficulty of three. Yeah, I'll be nice and do medicine. And uh, I'll give you three threat for two dice. Okie dokie. Do here. That'll do it. Uh, he is successfully malicted, and the key is awake in some condition. I'll be with you in one moment, my friend, and I'll pat his chest and turn around. He's like, yes, interrogate a Hylong. I need a word in private. Just look around for a second, like, this is private as we're going to get. I point at the Gorn. I'll be flushing his memory after this. Mm. I want him to be nice and docile. Did you know, fun fact, did you know that the Gorn actually don't have sexual dimorphism? By that I mean, that's not a male you have there. That's a female. Well, then she had a wonderful day. Hmm, I'm sure. It's actually why I'm here to talk with you. 
And she just sort of unsheaths her batleth and just starts twirling it around, not in like a menacing fashion, but just almost like an idle activity. Like uh, one would do with like a, a, a butterfly knife or, a, you know, some sort of, you know, bladed instrument. But uh, she says, the administrator has concerns that you are perhaps a little too zealous in your work. I will admit I miscalculated on how much tissue there was in the throat. And apparently my fist decided to keep on going. But there will be no loss of product. In fact, this gorn will be made in a wonderful example to the others. Also, it'll be more effective. It's partially about that why I'm here. You see, the administrator also has concerns that you might be, well, to put it bluntly, engineering a mechanical army that is not subservient to him but to yourself they all have the same implant the very one at the base of your or the top of your spine mm -hmm. mine's an emp theirs will be more explosive mm. literally and who holds the codes to those mine well i believe the administrator does and for the others, I believe the administrator as well. Unless he's and, shared those codes with someone else. And only the administrator. For the explosives? I do not know. You'll have to ask him. I simply implant them. Doctor, let's drop the pretenses. We both know that you're a smart individual. I'm willing to bet you've had your EMP disabled for quite a while now. Unfortunately not. It's positioned in such an interesting spot that I haven't been able to get at it. Mm. Nor have I had a time. Your organics seem to be injuring yourselves at an accelerated rate. So what you're saying is, if you had more free time on your hands, you might be able to deal with that. Is that correct? Perhaps. I'm currently enjoying, though, the steady supply of organic tissue I'm allowed to delve into. And every now and then make changes. And he's just going to look to the the bed with the white cloth over it of <laughs> the body where we're sure was. <laughs> sometimes experiments pass and sometimes they fail. Hypothetically, what would you say if your intake of experimental subjects were to increase? I'm only one individual, but it will give me more of a broader stroke to paint, as it were. More experimentation with a wider, wider variety of things. I could take much more risks in some of the designs. Hmm. And uh, continuing the analogy, what would you say to a new promoter of your art? Well, the station does change hands often. It's been a while since his last cleansing. I tell you what, Doctor. I'll say this much. If you find a way to get rid of that EMP in your skull, perhaps we can discuss a change in promoter. Very well. We'll discuss it at a later date, then. Oh, and interrogator. Yes. I do happen to know that certain combining technology with organic causes some rashes. If you ever need a cream with for that issue, please let me know. Hmm. I'll certainly keep that in mind. Good day, Doctor. Good day. And he's going to look to the little silhouette in the shadow that's playing the organ or the harpsichord. He's like, now, now, Nalan. Play better. <laughs> mm. We'll go back to work on the Gorn. The Gorn is continues to struggle against some over-engineered uh, uh, ah, cuffs binding him to the uh, surface. If the uh, if his uh, mecha mechanized voice box was turned on. He might have some very interesting things for you to say. Mostly Gorn curse words, but, well. 
Oh yeah, the next step is I'm going to start wiping its memories. I figured you would. Okay, we are going to cut down to engineering. And we're Mr. Uh, let me get up the right screen here. We're Mr. Crawford. Or not Mr. Crawford, that's <laughs> the wrong season. Mr. Kellen, you are working down when a group of engineering laborers uh, w uh, overseeing the labor shift change these are not the skilled laborers these are just the brute ones the ones that go back and forth and carry tools and hit things with hammers and mm -hmm. for the sake of funsies we are going Mr. Kelvin you're as some of these are relatively new recruits to the station it is in everyone's best interest for you to ensure that the station is getting its money's worth so. yes indeed Mr. Ah. Kelvin <laughs> Mr. Kelvin how are the new slaves going well the Gorn aren't necessarily the strongest individual, not strongest, the smartest individuals, but they at least know how to do a little percussive maintenance when needed. Percussive maintenance? He just points over to a Gorn that's like, essentially just hitting a console with a hammer. Ah, uh, percussive maintenance, yes. I think that's called beating something to death, but, you know, to each their own. And he's kind of looking over at a patch, just like, ah, that actually fixed it. I thought that was... Okay. Um, did you need anything? I'm just taking a look at the new stock to make sure that they're going to give the administrator his money's worth, because... Not like he's not rolling around in enough stuff besides himself. Hmm. You're telling me. <sighs> um... You know, with enough of these Gorn around, you'd think that there might be... Okay, and so he's looking around. How much security is actually down here right now? Uh, there's a significant amount. Now, most of the Gorn went into the, you know, the deuterium refineries and whatnot where... Security and um, enforcers are highest density. These are the quote-unquote smartest of the Gorn, a.k.a. they can put two and two together to make four. Um, however, there are still several enforcers around, and these, and they all have um, well, the loyalty implants placed at the base of their skulls. Mr. Kellen, of course, has the master enforcement d device, that has literally everyone that he oversees. Uh -huh. But all the enforcers, of course, have their own charges. <laughs> literally and physic literally and metaphorically. You would think with all of this going on, you know, the administrator should be a little more concerned about just the sheer mass of the slaves we're bringing in. I mean, that is just my opinion. It's around, as if on cue, uh, there's an uproar that's happening around uh, Reactor 3. Uh, Jared, you, or Jaren, you are getting an alert from one of your engineering enforcement cadres that several, that a small group of Vulcan's, uh, Vulcan um, servants have uh, begun a barricading, have begun barricading themselves inside the reactor room and are threatening to detonate it. <sighs> Always the logical ones that go with this. Um, Kelvin, would you mind following me to my office? I don't mind in the slightest. Excellent. I think I have a way I can take care of this on my own. But just in case, 
uh, Lieutenant Commander Kellen to interrogate her high long? Yes? We have some Vulcan servants that are threatening to blow up a reactor and let's see scrolling through his pad it's actually huh not that there's enough redundant things on this station but i think i can take care of this on my own but um you have some security officers that could help take care of this correct i have people who are able to take care of almost anything you'll have to be specific Oh, uh, just specifically, um... Hmm. And looking at the schematics of the ship, is the reactor room basically, like, its own separate room that's being barricaded, or...? Yeah, so the... the think of it as concentric rings. Um, primar... The primarily... Ah, the primary um, thing is that these reactors are so bloody leaky and old that several layers have been... Uh, placed to prevent too much radiation from seeping out of it and the closer one gets to the core itself the more radiation there is vulcans have proven themselves to be quite durable against radiation s sickness and the like so they have been given the honor of working closest to the core most of the time they have done their job except for these three who have you now got delusions of freedom in their heads hmm <laughs> Uh, just send down some of your ones to quell riots in some EVA suits because, yeah, radiation's fun. And mm. and to be clear, you wish uh, them all exterminated or perhaps uh, reminded of their purpose. Um, I'll let you know about that in a second. All right. Uh, he says that just as he enters his office. And Kelvin, you'll see as they wa as he walks into his office, you'll find a uh, sort of like a like six pronged plug uh, behind the chair in his office. All right. Well, this is how I usually interact with the station, so don't freak out too much. And he'll sit down in his chair and put the plug in. And you kind of watch as he sort of just sits really weirdly still. And his eyes are the only things that are moving. Okay. And, and this Kel and is basically is just standing. flavor for the neural interface talent. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um. Hmm. Uh. A question to you, GM. How long could this reactor be off and not be, uh... Basically, how long could I have this thing off and not make the station go boom? Uh, there are three reactors in total. Mm -hmm. um, number one and number, th number one, two, and three, obviously. Um, thanks to the age of the station, all of them have to be running for production to main be maintained at its current level. But taking one offline for a little bit of time shouldn't be shouldn't have too much of an impact. You just may have to explain your actions to the administrator tomorrow. Oh, easy enough. Mm. And um, I shall wait until uh, interrogator Highlong's uh, team gets down to that close to that reactor. Okay. And once I have confirmation down there, I will briefly turn off that reactor. Mm -hmm. And I'll just communicate. And then I'll just unplug and communicate to Highlong very quickly. Um, feel free to make an example, interrogator. Very well. I will send my best uh, individuals there immediately. There is a brief firefight. Thank it's a one-sided firefight because they had no uh, the only thing that they had to work with them was an improvised tricorder that would have been re-rigged as an explosive device it had all the effectiveness as one would think none there's a and... brief firefight and <laughs> one, in the end two of the Vulcans are brought down and one is brought, brought out 
kicking and screaming. As soon as they have all gone, I will just switch that reactor back on, and I will make a full report of what happened to the administrator. All right. Interrogator Hylong. Vulcan female is dragged out of the reactor room by two of the bodyguards. In full... Uh, her face is covered with radiation burns. The doctor, should he be here, would say that this is typical of Vulcans. They, t they handle radiation well. They only burn a little on the outside. She spits a bit of green blood at the, at the feet of Hylong and Kellen. Now, now, there's no need for such uncivil behavior. Monsters. Monsters, all of you! I can't wait for this commonwealth to make it out here so that you are all punished, brought low like the beasts you are. Mm. You really do think that, don't you? She smiles. It's kind of creepy to see a Vulcan smile. It's only logical. Mm. I would have thought that would have been beaten out of you by now. I think we'll have to uh, see about that. Take her to my personal torture chamber. Her eyes go a little wide as she realizes the uh, it, what those words mean. And then they, she steals herself, grits her teeth, and says, You will have to kill me. I suppose and I'll, that could be arranged. And taking a hint, if Hylong wants to, Kellen will open one of the agonizers. <laughs> Just sort of look over at an agonizer. Let's start with a light round of agonizing. Perhaps your tune will change. Throw in. As she gets thrown into one of the agonizers... And the scene, and she starts screaming. The door gets closed, I... and the screen muff, and the screams get muffled. And what I uh, what I want to do is set it to oscillate so that it sort of goes from weakest to highest, mm -hmm. but it does so randomly, so there's no way of getting used to the pain. Ah, yes, like one of those uh, treadmill exercise patterns that I hate. Yep, I know mm -hmm. precisely the type. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and with that scene shall fade to black unless anyone has anything else to say nope well I want to try something oh yes what is it you'd like to try I'm gonna repurpose a bunch of little nanobots to uh, go poke at that EMP okay not to disarm it directly, but to disable its transmitter. Ah. You realize least... that the me that the mechanism that your EMP doesn't go off is it has to receive a signal every 24 hours. Uh, so going that'll after... make a loop. So it does receive, but it's, it's a closed loop. Okay. So... What? Uh, this is. Uh, if you're going to be performing this on yourself, this is going to be a. Uh, let's say. Control plus engineering. And this will be a difficulty of three, but I'm going to spend some threat to up it to difficulty four and increase complication range 18 to 20. Uh. I would like to have uh, here. my my good old little assistant, uh, May Loon. Ah, uh, come and assist me. Okay, uh, May Loon, a uh, strange creature mixed from the body of a porpoise, mixed with the cybernetics of a humanoid. It moves in great pain. And squeaks at you. 
I, I that actually hurt my heart. <laughs> um, yeah, so he'll assist. Okay. Uh, someone could grab Meiloon's character sheet, please. Sure. Or <laughs> Meiloon. Um. Uh, okay. And sorry, it was uh, control. Control engineering. En control engineering. Difficulty of four. Complication eighteen to twenty. Could I say daring instead? Because it is a daring tactic to try and uh, circumvent the uh, okay. transmitter. Sure, I'll let that go. Yay! And... Don't want to pop it so early. I'll give you three threat for two extra dice. Ooh. Okay. Oh, and... I, does having a med kit help at all? No, because you're sending your nanoprobes to do the work. So a okay. med kit will not help in this instance. Uh, and yeah, nanoprobes. Okay, let's see if I blow off my head. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Wow. Let's see. What, uh... Artificial intelligence or computer science work here for Mayloon? Mm, no, I don't think either would, in it, I'm afraid. Okie doke. Mm. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's, that's a 17. 17. Shame. <laughs> oh, well. Um, with the extra momentum, am I allowed to use that to do a little extra? As long as, if you don't want to take it as momentum, I will... Uh, if you spend that and the other momentum you have stored, I will allow you to add an advantage. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, it is... It's a perfect loop now, so it's not going to accept any... Um, it's, not, it's never going to try to reconnect. That's basically what I want to play about. It's not going to reconnect to anything. So basically it's asking itself if it wants to blow up, and the answer will always be no? Yeah. Okay. And... The nanobots like cut off any outside interference. Okay, uh, that's going to take you down, take you out for an hour or two while while you figure this out. It is right. not a uh, simple procedure. <clears throat> but congratulations, you believe that you are now free of the administrator's loyalty protocol. Yeah. All right. All uh, right. And I have one thing I want to do with Dolorum as Jensen, but not not Augment Jensen. <laughs> as regular Jensen? <laughs> yeah, medical Jensen Calvin. Okay. Um, wait, do you mean um, Z Zealous? Ellis? Ellis, thank you. Hey. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, where do you want this scene to be? In a hallway. Okay. Ellis, you are... Uh, you're out doing your standard patrols when Mr. Michael Jensen... Uh, no, Calvin. Uh, Calvin Jensen. Oh, Calvin Jensen. Oh, that Jensen, not the other one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what does Calvin Jensen look like? He looks exactly like the picture still. Okay. <laughs> A little strung out. Hey, hey, hey... Uh... You 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 intercepted a package the other day, um, con contraband. Perhaps. Uh, look, look, there's a small crate in there that was supposed to be mine. Okay, it was a box, but this big, it was supposed to be mine. I I paid a lot of money to get here. I like I just can I get it? I'll I'll, I'll give you what I have. Like it's not much, but. Let me see what I can do. Right, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Like, I, like anything you need, just let me know, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll do anything you ask me. I just, I just, I just, I just really need that package. And like, he's like seriously just twitching hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Stop all I wanted to do. <laughs> for you. Thank, thank you, 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 thank you. And he like, he just like shake your hands, and he like, he's cold and clammy. 
Ah. Oh, withdraw. <laughs> His icon just deserves it. <laughs> I mean, I could think of worse ways for characters to be out here in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> right. Yeah, no, I will go and get that package. Hmm. Excellent. <clears throat> And what do you wish to do with the package once you've taken it out of uh, quarantine? And evidence, I guess. I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'll meet him at my quarters and give it to him. All right. I'm trying to find the name of it, but it's that um, Felicium. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't sound very nice. So this will call back to uh, Enterprise. He's actually one of... Uh, I'd say this Jensen is from that planet that uh, needed it as a vaccine. Ah. Oh, right. I remember that episode now. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interrogator Hylong. It's approaching uh, 1,200 hours. And you receive the signal from the doctor that he believes that the loyalty or his personal loyalty protocol has been bypassed. Then I, would... I drop by and have a conversation with him. I'd say the message would be more like, I have a moment to speak. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> doctor, why is there a dolphin here? <laughs> have it you heard of centaurs? <laughs> Sorry. It's the the head of a dolphin and the body of a betazoid Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's anyway, so uh, I walk in and I say, well, Doctor, you have a moment, do you? I do indeed. I seem to have gained newfound freedom, as it were. Hmm. That mean you're ready for a new promoter? I will say I will observe, and if the favor... Or the tide is going in any particular favor, more beneficial, then I will intervene. But if things should go sideways, I prefer to stay clear then. Hmm. I was hoping for a little bit more, but that is acceptable. Tell me, you have a general grasp of things. Tell me, what is your impression of uh, Mr. Elias? He hasn't reported for his physical since coming aboard the station. Apparently, according to his subordinates, I give him the creeps. Mm, I cannot imagine why. I simply wish to confirm Elias is on the administrator's payroll, correct? That's form of the word, yes. Mm. Do you know how much they're being paid? No, I do not have that access, unfortunately. Mm, a pity. Well... Let's just say that in the next several hours, events may unfold that you may wish to pay attention to. Very well. If you are tempted anything, I suggest securing him would be a good asset, as he might hold some of those explosive controls. Hmm. Well, I can't really comment on hearsay, but let's just say I'm talking with him next. Good. If you need anything else, please feel free. I'm going to go to the bar and examine and monitor some of the organics. You do that. And she turns on her heel and walks on out. Okay. And while this is going on, Mr. Kellen, um, your office, and you have discreetly summoned Mr. Kelvin and Mr. Z uh, Mr. Zyler to your office. Deep in the bowels of the refinery area, Surrounded by all the noise that could, would probably cause any OSHA's observers to shake their heads and immediately find the nearest earplugs. Um, oh. aud audio monitoring is very difficult. And naturally you have found and disabled all the known security bugs. So if you want a private place to talk, your office is probably the best place for it. Excellent. Um... Mr. Kelvin, Mr. Elias. Yes? You summoned. 
if you had to give your own personal opinion, um, what do you think of this administrator? I have no opinion. He pays my paycheck. That's all I care about. Personally, I think this administrator definitely needs a change in scenery. Maybe a little darker and colder, I'm thinking. Just my thought. He wouldn't fit. And Kellen just kind of, like, stifles a laugh. Well, Mr. Kelvin, how would you run this fueling station if you were the administrator? Well, I would run it a little more profitably so that maybe people that might be thinking of some kind of rebellion might decide to be swayed away because they might be making more money than they will ever know what to do with. And he kind of will look over to Xyler and be like, and how would that sound to you, Mr. Xyler? You pay my price, I go with you. I think hmm. I think some people could be persuaded a different way or two. Just my thinking. Of course, but I think there are some certain other individuals on the senior staff that would serve as a bit of a roadblock, as it were. Oh, no doubt. A certain interrogator, and I be- as much as I don't like this, I believe our doctor would both be some fairly large roadblocks. That may be Thanks, true. Please. However, you know, there are some ways of dealing with people that are, what should I call it, not typical. And what would you pr- propose, Mr. Kelvin? I would propose, in a way, the our, our, our lady interrogator might be considering something a little differently in her future, something that might bring her closer to what she most desires. And it's right about then that she walks in. I'm sorry, what are we talking about, gentlemen? We were just talking about some of your interests, interrogator. Hmm. Right now my interests lie with you, Mr. Elias. Why am I the center of attention today? Well, let's just say that you are in a unique position. Tell me, how much is he paying you? I just rattle off a number. What would you say to making double that? I'm intrigued. Intrigued? That's the only word you have for it? Until I have a contract in front of me that I can sign? I don't commit to anything. Hmm. It's a good thing I had one prepared. And she hands you a pad, and it's not double, it's not triple, it is quadruple what you are currently being paid. Very intriguing. And for the... What would we be doing? Well... If I read the mood correctly in the way you can't meet my eye, well, some of you anyway, she just casts a sidelong glance at Kevlon, or Kelvon and Kel, uh, Kellen. It seems that uh, I'm not alone in my thinking, so perhaps this can work out well for all of us. Let's just say that there are those on the station that enjoy art, and those that think that the person peddling the art need to change, if you catch my meaning. I assume you're talking about our doctor? I could be talking about many things. Sort of catching her drift, he just sort of nods. Let's just say that if you are to read that contract a little bit more closely, you'll find instructions as to what is to take place in approximately 
and she glances at a timepiece. 53 minutes from now. Uh, what does that entail out of character as I start to look down the contract? So uh, out of character, the contract basically tells Elias and whoever he feels willing to bring along as a trusted subordinate. Uh, the goal is to kill the right-hand woman of uh, the administrator and then either get the administrator to submit to the fact that he's just a puppet or kill him too. But the the clear instructions are that the the captain's woman has or the administrator's woman has to die first. Well, as our engineer, I have ways of making that happen. Um, Mr. Calvin, actually, I should, will ask for all of your uh, opinions on the matter, but. Should this go off successfully, I was thinking that Mr. Calvin would make quite the administrator, unless you wanted that position for yourself, looking to high long. Oh, no. No, I much prefer the freedom that comes with the interrogator position. Of course. Do you think you would be, um, agreeable with peddling our doctor's art looking to Kelvin I think I might be able to f see a around that if it happens to still be profitable for all involved I'm sure there's a certain way we can make that happen hmm. yes this is very intriguing the biggest I mean, question is, thought. how do we get that administrator's woman? I believe her name was Zir. How do we get her alone? Well, that's Why? your problem, not mine. If you have any questions, gentlemen, I will be an ops. Good day. Oh, and next time, turn off the listening devices before you have a conversation. And I just sort of point at a corner. I think it's best not to underestimate our good interrogator here. Why would you underestimate anybody in this facility? I never said I would. <laughs> you implied that's just as bad. Okay, so it sounds like a plan is coming together. What? <laughs> How do you wish this plan to take effect? And I believe, unless we got that one momentum from somewhere, I believe that got spent. Thank you. <clears throat> well, have we figured out if Zir is always with the administrator? I mean, like 24-7 or the equivalent thereof around? Um... This uh, whoever wishes to make this check could roll me a re recent security to go over what they have learned about her uh, habits. Uh, this would be a difficulty of two. I believe Mr. Elias would be best suited for this. <laughs> mean. <laughs> With no focus. Eh, focus is only how only help you get crits, which I mean are good things, but. I'll give you a threat for a third die. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to turn around and spend that threat um, for an increased complication range of 18 to 20. Well, I have two successes and a failure, but I do have bold security, so I'm going to reroll that zero. Fair enough. Yeah, that's... Well, I went from a 15 to a 16, but it's still not a... Yeah. You failure. still saved it. Yeah. <laughs> still not enough for a failure of a crit fail, but uh, that's enough for you to understand her basic patterns. Um, the Andorian known as Zir has very rarely left the captain's or the administrator's side 
uh, something about an Andorian loyalty bond. Not entirely sure how it came to be. All that sh all that you know is that wherever Mr. Bernie Jail goes, uh, she does as well, and she is uh, she has already thwarted two attempts on his life a few years back, and they were kind of sloppy and done with enough anger that and they were made good good examples of. In fact, it was probably after the last one that they decided to bring on Miss, Miss Highlong to ensure that such things were further dissuaded. Tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so for the, mo for the most part, she, does n she barely goes any further than five meters from the administrator's side. The only time is when he performs his um, bathing and uh, sanitation uh, routines. And his um, his doctor's required physicals. Um, the doctor, of course, while you don't know this, the doctor does. Um, he ha Bernie Jail has a high capacity artificial heart, and also one of his lungs is um, artificially. Uh, yeah, he's basically living on an internal version of an iron lung. <laughs> is is either of those two things coming up within the 50 we'll assume that time has passed say like a 45 minute time span between the time that high long wants this to go off it's only it's roughly at this stage about uh two o'clock in the afternoon 1400 hours uh sadly suffice it to say uh, mr bernie jail's morning and bathing routines are most likely not going to happen unless you know something were to uh, instigate such a routine. So let's say a hydraulic pipe above where he sits blows. It could specifically be like you know, this ship has a septic tank, right? Oh God! <laughs> but yes, it it has a very um inefficient waste processing facility. I mean, septic tank. Boom. I mean, yeah, there's probably one in that chair if we're going to be 100% yeah, honest. Probably. <laughs> yeah, it's true. In theory, I could hack that thing, but. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. There are some fun options. I slightly want a sniper, though. Yeah, but I want to pull a HAL 9000 moment, too. <laughs> I just want a persuader to leave him. That's probably going to be hard to do. Yeah, I know. I know that, but, you know. She's not yeah, innocent. Persuade some. She can go. Hmm. I mean... I could, in theory, just space ops, but that wouldn't be as fun. And High Long's currently there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't bite the hand that pays you. Exactly. Hmm. As we go to bite the hand that pays us currently. <laughs> don't bite the it's second hand. Fine. As long as you don't bite both hands, you're okay. Uh, hand's hand offers a wafer, her hand offers a cake. Big mouth. We could, hmm, let's, let's ha try and have a little bit of fun. Once the time arrives, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and, uh, make a pipe or two being septic or otherwise. Uh, yeah, I'll try and burst it to see if I can, uh get the captain a little get our administrator a little dirty okay this sounds like a, f a fun plan I'm all for it okay so uh, prep work other than the pipe bursting who's doing what uh, I'm, I'm at the bar okay I'm gonna set up to be able to uh, 
our lovely Andorian, while uh, outside of the administrators. Okay. So. And I will, Mr. Kelvin, will actually be tapping into some of the security feeds to kind of keep an eye on some of the more keep a look at ops and keep an eye on that while trying to see if there might be another way to also cause the administrator to separate from his separate from his bodyguard okay <clears throat> here i have one one question yes this will probably normally be like a daring engineering task correct uh yes um, could I possibly try and be careful about it and make it an extended task to use control engineering? Sure. I will allow this to be an, a, a control engineering. Um, typically, that uh, let's see, I would say uh, due to the station's age, the control engineering uh, typical difficulty will be a, th a three. Um, this is going to be a fairly easy work track, I think, just because you know the station so well and can plug into it yeah uh difficulty of three uh work track of 12 resistance of two but okay. considering that you're doing this for main engineering you get a, an advantage uh so i'm just going to say no resistance at all okay i will most certainly be uh plugged in while i do this and just because i find it humorous and i think it suits your character uh, while in the virtual reality of the station, which I'm sure is very primitive compared to what we're used to, you have your personal assistant, uh, materializes inside your head. <laughs> and because I suspect as much from your pers character, she is dressed far, far more scantily than what you're used to seeing. Input query. Um, let's carefully... Um, this pipe... And it'll pull... Well, I'm assuming it'll be a rough holographic map of, like, ops. Mm -hmm. Let's work carefully to make this pipe here burst. Um, we need to get our administrator a little dirty. Accepted. And feel free to make your first roll, and... Because you guys have given me a lot of threat, I'm going to start spending it. So I'm going to increase the complication range 18 to 20. Okay. Um, let's see. Control engineering. Sure. Uh, I'll pop my the determination here. Okay. Uh, sometimes being connected to your ship is the best thing. That's a good value to tap. And let's see here. Could we possibly argue uh, maintenance as a focus? Yeah, I think I'll let that. Usually you're trying to fix what breaks. This time you're just being um, proactive anti-maintenance? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Boop. Okay, so that plus your determination, that gets you the three successes you need. Uh, so yep. roll me seven challenge dice, please. Will do. Oh, I forgot to mention this is a magnitude Ooh. of two. Okay. Um. Let's see, you said there was no resistance? Yes. Uh, let me actually write that out. Diff three. Twelve. Zero. And magnitude. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, uh, you have no momentum. Let's see, and I have in the nick of time. So that's actually uh, six work. Ah, that's enough for a breakthrough. And let's go ahead and... In... Yeah, let's... Uh, I'll give you a threat to re-roll those four zeros. Oh, okay then. Because I want to try and knock this out in one go. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Let's see, so that's... Um, let's see, so that's 7 plus 6. That is 13 work. <laughs> okay. Nice. nice. So that worked. That was a very quick extended task. 
I should come up with new extended task rules. These ones go by way too quick. Eh, another time. <laughs> um, the you're you're out cold for longer than some anyone watching your office is comfortable with. Um, out of curiosity, um, Kelvin and Elias, are you guys still around, or did you guys scamper off to your own things? Scampered off to my own office. Mm. I scampered off to set up. Or to, like, scope the area to be able to set up. Okay. Um, Mr. Kellen. Um, yes. As you finish, um, Rami is about to give you your reward for completing a task successfully. Uh, <laughs> when all of a sudden she reverts to her basic protocol, go, proximity alert. Recommend that you eject from the system immediately. And I shall eject. You eject just as uh, Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Holmquist walks in the room with a dagger in one hand and a fairly large hydro spanner in the other. Chief Engine, I th I've already been promoted once today, thanks to the Inquisitor. I think it's about time I get my get a second promotion. What do you think, Chief? Um, and you said I have the uh, loyalty thing for the entire engineering department? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, what exactly can I do with that? Um, you can set, you can um, either immediately blow someone's head off, or you can just set the bomb to um, beep loudly so that they remind themselves that they have it inside. Um, I would assume I would have this easily within arm's reach. Yes, yes, you would. Um, I. Um, no, nah, I'm just going to blow his head off. Okay. And the lieutenant commander immediately gets uh, demoted to a puddle of blood, gore, and body parts all over your office. I assume it kind of goes like uh, scanners. <laughs> just like, it's like, uh, all right. <laughs> Doctor. Doctor. What is it now? Um, let's just say I just received a new organ donor. What is with the station and everyone dying today? Very well, I'll send one of my orderlies to collect its remains. Excellent. And he, I guess we'll send some kind of uh, we'll say like a text-ish message to High Long, and he'll kind of give his own like pseudo countdown to that pipe bursting, and just be like, "Uh, just send like three, two, one." <laughs> All right. Uh, before that happens, uh, while you are having your explosive revelations in engineering, I believe Mr. Kelvin was looking to. Do some secret shenanigans of his own. Yes, what I'd be planning to do is also be trying to set off some kind of not toxic, but toxic smelling odors going off in the operations center. Okay. Uh, is this to correspond with the upcoming pipe burst, or before or after? To go, like, just prior to kind of like just before the appointed time kind of let that off kind of like does anybody smell that and then boom ah okay so you're okay um so this is going to be a daring engineering task um as you're why not couldn't be... why couldn't it be security uh, <laughs> because that's really not a security system i don't think um However, would it be espionage though Ooh, that would be espionage, yes. Ooh. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, let's say, difficult. Um, how long have you been on this station? I like money, so I've been on here for quite a while. Okay. So um, if you give me some threat, I will give you the advantage and re reduce the difficulty to two. Yeah, I'll give you some threat. Okay. So the um, 
Okay, so it's going to be difficulty of two. Um, and daring engineering. In which I only get a one. <sighs> and I suppose the station could assist if someone cares to roll the station, which will oh, be uh, structure plus engineering. <laughs> the station is assisting you trying to break it. I love it. I mean, refit, please. Yeah. Yeah, well. Hmm. I mean, yeah, if you have determination, you could pop that to re-roll the zero, but that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to do that quite yet. No, I think I might need that determination soon. Okay. Um, you're... So it appears that during some of uh, Elias's, um, or possibly the administrator himself's routine uh, security scans, he's plugged some of the back doors that you've exploited in the past. And the station staunchly uh, refuses to give you access to the, the, uh, to the systems you had once had access to, and you just don't have the time to re-establish um, them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then basically he's cussing in Denobulin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm keep, if I have all the all of you guys more or less in place, um, Kellen, you're still in engineering. Kelvin, you. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, Kelvin, you're in your office, which I'm assuming is somewhat close to the operations area. That'd be true. Um, Elias is outside ops, ready to make his move, and Hylong is in ops, and the doctor is still in the bar, because no one's told the doctor anything? Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. So oh, we... uh, I would have uh, grabbed one of my uh, earlier subjects that had wandered into the bar, and I was like, no, 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 Mr. Crowley, back to your room. <laughs> Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, it is the close to the appointed time. I saw ELH went EFK. Is he back? He is not back just yet. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> um, if we want to give him a little time, we can... Yeah, let's... Anyone want to hang out with the doctor at the bar? <laughs> I'm no, not, okay. <laughs> I'm not hearing a lot of people eager to uh, talk to the slightly um, psychopathic android. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, and because ELH is going to be integral to this scene, let's just take a 10 minute bio break. And sure. we will be back here at 5 after the hour. Sounds and good. So Sounds I good. will see you guys momentarily. All, All right. right, we'll be back.
But by the way, Hello all, we are back from break. So, uh, we are going to cut right to the operations center. Hi Long, you are in your loyalty operations uh, console. Just keeping an eye on things when you receive a, a text alert on your console from uh, Mr. Kellen. Three, two. I, I I just sort of smile and uh, sit down in a chair away from where I expect the action and just wait. Yeah. So Bertie Jail up on the command podium uh, where his hover chair is nestled properly or snugly into its control console is snoring ever so slightly. You've sort of gotten used to the rhythm by now. All of a sudden there's a small uh, beeping uh, from a console on the engineering panel, one of the, um, what's the word, lackeys, looks at it, question, speaks up, uh, administrator, sir, and roughly around then the pipe, uh, the pipe that goes from the off deck one sewage processing plant um, that runs overhead of Mr. Bernie Jail's control console bursts slathering the entire upper deck of the operations center in f f the most foul smelling fecal and, and urine and other unwanted body fluids and Bernie Jail wakes up realizes what he's in and screams like a little girl uh, he tries to rub it off to, tries to wipe himself off with just his hands Realizing that's making the mess even worse. And he begins in a... His face goes beet red and he launches into the loudest tirade someone, anyone has ever heard. Probably be heard all the way down to deck three if not further. Who is responsible <laughs> for the maintenance of this ship? I demand answers. Where's this chief engineer? I... And I... Yes? At this point, uh, Highlong will just receive a... Uh text message that's just like a smiley face emoticon uh, and then he he carries on the rant I swear I'm going to demote him no I'm going to agonize it nope that's too good for him I'm going to put him in an airlock and flush him out of it yes tether him oh god some of it's in my mouth now <laughs> <laughs> and he deco <sighs> and he yells Hi long, uh, hi long, you are... God! <coughs> I gotta go get cleaned up. By the time I get back, someone had better clean this shit up. This literal shit up. <coughs> and he begins wheeling himself into his office and his private quarters uh, beyond Zir, also covered in fecal matter. But at least she has the dignity to stay sort of silent wait for the deluge to end, and then start cleaning herself off with um, hydro wipes that are conveniently located wherever Bernie Jail seems to be frequent. Well, ain't that some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I was recording that from my station. <laughs> uh, Mr. Elias. Uh, the plan has gone off. Uh, Zir has been separated from Mr. Bernie Jail. I'm just going to appear next to her. Okay. Uh, this is going to be percep uh, opposing perception and security rules. Uh, I believe she is defending, which means that she needs to meet or beat your result in order to succeed. Present security. Um, um, should right. it be in, uh, 
How do I want this to work? Yeah, let's let's just do a pose present security. All right. Would any of my focuses work? Uh, what are your focuses? Hand phasers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, emergency medicine, martial arts, composure. I believe composure in this instance would. Awesome. I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. You are... So, obviously, being um, covered in the station's uh, biological remnants is distracting for Zir. Uh, she does not notice your uh, stealthy approach. I'm going to uh, put a phaser up to her, the back of her head and just go, I heard there's supposed to be staffing cuts. She doesn't say anything. Um, her high long, I'm sure you're probably paying attention surreptitiously. Uh, you notice that her eyes go wide as she feels the butt of a phaser rifle on the back. Or fa what are you armed with, I should say? Is it phaser rifle? Sure. Okay. The butt or the business end of a phaser rifle against her t the back of her head. Her, and she immediately starts sort of flexing her upper body in preparation for a strike. <clears throat> I fire. Oh, okay. Um, you're point blank. I'm not even going... Well... Uh, I don't want her to die immediately. But at the same time, you have... Ad I'll give you advantage on the roll. So, um... Yeah, so... Yeah, roll me, um... Yeah, roll me control plus security. Uh, difficulty two. But you get uh, an additional dice because you are point blank. So I have dead eye marksman. So if I aim, I get I get a reduced difficulty on the next attack. Oh boy. Okay. So difficulty one. Uh, it's control security, giving you a threat for a third die. Okay. Uh, which I'm going to immediately spend for. Uh, increased complication range of 17 to 20. All right. So Dead Eye Marksman, it's a difficulty one, mm -hmm. plus everything that AIM usually does. I have a hand phaser's focus. I'm going to reroll that zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Please. that's uh, two two momentum. And roll me challenge dice, please. How many? It's three plus security, correct? Um, for phaser rifle, I believe it is indeed three plus your security score. Nope, four actually. Oh, phaser rifle. Yeah, sorry, four. Thank you for reminding me. So four plus security. Nine. Challenge I just happen dice. to have the thing up, so no worries. Okay. Um, I'm gonna spend. Rose. Okay, spend that. Spend one momentum. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, nine stress total. Ouch. Okay, um, let's double check what, because I think aim could give you the additional damage if I rolled thing. Aim is. I don't have it. There. Aim. Ah. I don't see it. I know it's here somewhere. Aim. Uh, may reroll a single d20. Okay. So that's what that does. I thought it did more. Oh, that's because it's accurate. Okay. And then any number 20 is be rerolled. Oh, cool. Works for me. Okay, so yeah, so she takes nine stress, and this was a phaser or just uh, so. Are you choosing to be lethal or non-lethal? Uh, 
Um, you cut out there, Dalrum. I said I'll take her out. Okay, as in completely. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah, so there's a, a fairly slender, attractive blue body, but it's now missing its head. <laughs> I just looked at Hylon. The snake has been deheaded. Hmm. Well, if you will now follow this contract, and I toss you another data pad, and uh, when you grab it out of the air, you see that on it, you now have an additional payment uh, towards your account. This is in addition to the quadruple. You are now to kill not only uh, the, uh, what's his name, uh, Kevlon, or Kelvin, but also uh, Jaren Klen. Out of curiosity, why are we taking out our puppets? Because they know too much. And the last thing I need is loose ends thinking that they can pull this stunt on me. Here's my question, GM. Yeah. Yes? Um, can I hear this down in engineering if I wanted to observe? Hmm. I'm not entirely... Well... Um, being plugged into the ship. <laughs> being plugged in. Uh, so I will give you an advantage on that. Roll me control engineering to see if you've uh, to see if you have hacked in. Because I'm assuming you would have loved to have watched your handiwork. Oh, uh, of course. And yeah. I was also saying that I was recording the incident in it as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, now, I would looking... say that Hylong would probably have surreptitiously turned off monitoring once Bernie Jail had left. Yeah. So this is probably going to be an opposed role. Yes, I think an opposed role would be good. So control uh, opposed control engineering roles from Hylong and Kellen. Could I pitch a security because I'm security locking them out? Yeah, that would work. So engineering or security, whichever you deem best. Okay. Um, Since... Uh, Kelvin is recording the incident. Could I say that he is assisting me in this? Uh, you guys are doing this from separate stations and not really working together, so I'm going to say no. Okay. However, because you're plugged into the ship, I will allow the ship to assist. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, with, um, I think computer's security would be best from this ship. Someone wants to roll for the refueling station? I got it. You said computers what? Computer security. Got it. Hmm. So, station doesn't help. Let's see, I don't... But I think you can re-roll that zero thanks to your neural link. I can, yes. Okay, uh, can you re-roll that zero, please, Scotty? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so Miss Hylong, oof. Ooh. Ooh. So I succeed, but there is a complication, and I actually yep. have an idea for the complication. Okay, uh, pitch me your complication. My complication is is that the doctor hears all of this. I think that is a good complication. So in uh, te- in your um, haste of blocking the monitoring devices, you accidentally uh, reroute or you accidentally open a monitoring port for the doctor to listen in. So the doctor is now listening in to Hylong's plans to uh, terminate. Some of her puppets, whether the doctor cares or not, is up to him. Yeah, and it should be made clear that at no point uh, was the doctor listed in any of the pads. Nope. The moment I hear that, you know, this is all going down, I'm heading to Bernie. Ah. <clears throat> okay. Bernie Jail's uh, security room. Cool. Meanwhile on the bridge. Meanwhile on the bridge. I imagine that his doorway literally says weekend at, and then it's his quarters. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, so Bernie Jail being the paranoid individual that he is, or he's like to call it overprepared, does have a secondary entrance into his 
sweet. Um, it is, of course, coded for high level and trusted associates only, which, of course, means that um, the doctor could disable and punch his way through in a mere instant. So um, let's quickly go back to the engineering and the, and, uh, sorry, Kevel, no, Kevel. Um, so at the same time, as you guys are watching your deliciously stinky rev uh, murderous plot kick off, as soon as um, as soon as Zier's body hits the floor, you guys lose uh, monitoring to the station or to the operations center. Hmm. Mr. Kelvin. Yes. Would you say, as someone who is a good talker, that seems a little bit, I think, shady is the right word to use? I think the thing to use is we're about to be double-crossed. Because why would they cut it? Why would we get cut off? Interesting scenario. And my, uh... My loyalty is only for the engineering department, correct? Yes, you definitely don't have anything beyond that. Right. Unless, of course, you were to get creative with your engineering talents. This is true. Um. But you don't have very long, so... Would I be able to, from where, I, from where I'm at, attempt to lock down ops? Ooh, and... Sort of a security override or something. Ah, uh, yeah. yes, that sounds like an interesting idea. Um, we'll come back to that role momentarily. <clears throat> uh, so, okay. the doctor, uh, you, um, you come to the other entrance to Bernie Jail's quarters, and your augmented sensors detect that his uh, sonic... Sh it's not really a shower, that would indicate something small... A sonic tub is engaged, and he is currently a cl uh, cleaning himself. Uh, I'll simply press the intercom on the door. You know, like, Sir, I have been told that you have had some exposure. I have brought some antibiotics to help boost your immune system. Oh, uh, you here. Yes, yes, come in, come in, come in. Bring them. I'll come on in. Yep. So he is naked in his chair. How he got undressed is quest is best left um, unanswered. Uh, he is his chair is sitting in a large uh, depression the size of a hot tub, which is being bathed in sonic, uh, the cleansing sonics of a sonic tub. Here, I actually have an idea of how he dresses. It's just a holographic outfit he wears. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> bad imaging, bad imaging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for his new clothes. Uh, I don't think, as much as he likes to pretend that he is a uh, prince, and I don't, I think such technology is beyond even his price range. But he he sticks a flabby uh, stub of an arm out just to, come on, come on, give it here. Uh, is anyone else in the uh, quarters, or is it just him and me? It's just him and you. There is a bodyguard on the other side of the court, on the other side of his quarters. Okay. And I'm uh, going to inject the side of his neck. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a hypospray filled with nanobots. Ah. Oh. And they're immediately disabling or clamping up or gunking up his vocal cords. He... Okay, uh, this sounds like a daring medicine test, please. Uh, difficulty of two. <clears throat> uh, you know what? I'll give you a couple. I'll give you one more threat. I'll give okay. you one threat. And I'm going to turn or, turn that around because I'm actually spending more threat on this episode than I have in some previous combined. <laughs> uh, I'm going to increase complication 19 to 20. That is three successes. Uh, he he breathes a sigh of relief as the hypospray um, dejects into his neck, and then his eyes he 
reaches a hand across to sort of scratch where it implant where it uh, was placed and then scratch harder and then realize oh my god they're in him he goes to scream and only uh, a wheeze comes out as he begins okay. to uh, hyperventilate and his eyes go wide and he reaches for a small uh, a small handheld um, detonator kind of device that is uh, just slightly out of reach on his bathtub. I'll grab the device. Like, was this what you wanted? He nods frantically. I'll crush it. He sort of wheezes, You passed! Odd! No, 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 no. They want to kill you. I don't. You have so much potential and girth that I could experiment on. Despite your size, you have kept yourself in relatively good health. Yes, through modifications and alterations, but you have so much tissue that I could experiment on, and I think you'll be making a great guinea pig for my future endeavors. Don't think of this as a loss, but as a, a new position in life. You can help so many more because once I'm done figuring out how to make everyone think my way, everyone's going to think just like me. And I just pat him on the cheek and then punch him out just to knock him out. <laughs> oh, I'd love to make you roll another attack roll, but we saw what happened last time, so <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> and going to deploy the ventilation as in actually deploy it or just set it up deploy it oh fun okay the uh, uh, so in engineering I believe at this point both uh, uh, names escape me K both Kel the, the K <laughs> I'll just call you the K crew um, <laughs> works for me Kelvin and <laughs> Kellen <laughs> Um, Question. Yes. For advantage, do I have to give you two momentum, or can I give you two threat as well? Um, given how much threat I've spent, I'll take more. <laughs> I'd like to give you uh, enough threat for an advantage that it's detected way too late. Okay. Very well. Uh, so the K crew, you were at this point assume that. Or you guys believe that something's up, so you have probably reconvened in engineering, I assume? Yeah, probably from here it'll most likely be uh, Kelvin. Uh, not Kelvin. Uh, Kellen's office. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, now, remind me what role you were looking to do. Um, I'm going to try and just lock down ops. Ah, yes. Okay, so this is going to be a daring... Let's see. If you're going to use a security, use the security system. That will be a daring security difficulty two, or daring engineering difficulty three, because that involves overriding some security systems. Okay. And um, Kelvin can assist. I mean, I've had Let's... a twelve. When it, I've had a twelve when it comes to daring and security, but only a nine when it comes to daring engineering. Um, we can shoot for security then. Alrighty. Um, when I make this roll, I'm going to, since this is a one shot, why not? Um, I'm going to challenge my value to, of, I can fix anything mm -hmm. and change it to, I can break anything and then immediately spend it. I don't believe it works that way. Uh, um, no. you challenge the value to get your determination back. But you oh, don't... and then I have to use a different value. Yeah, if you don't get yeah, to... It has to be a different value. Yeah, you don't get the you don't get to replace it until the end of the session. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, in that case, I will use my value of kill anyone who gets in your way. <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> then. Let's see. So, daring security, and you said difficulty two, so we already have that. Um, I don't think any of my 
focuses apply here? No. Would my espionage focus work for me to help the assist? Um, as you're doing the security side of things, yes, it would. Excellent. Well, that didn't work. Well, but we still got it. You still got it, indeed. Okay. So that's what two momentum? Uh, nope. That's z no. You don't. Well, because get I. And, well, oh, because right. I spent my determination. Yes, right. So, yep, you get two momentum. <clears throat> okay. So, um, on the uh, bridge, where Zyler has just beginning to read through Hylong's, um new proposal, uh, the uh, operations blast doors slam shut as the state as the operations center goes into security lockdown. Hmm. And I'll I'll say that just for fun here, uh, we'll say a holographic projection of Rami shows up in front of High Long, and just kind of does like you know the Neat. and like the finger waggle. One of her, yeah, one of your console displays because this station has no holographic okay. projections. But yes, one of cons, one of uh, High Long's consoles goes. Not ah uh, ah uh, naughty naughty. Um, we have three momentum, yes. Yes, we do. I'd like to spend two momentum to create the advantage that in the process of uh, the security lockdown, ops is completely cut off from the rest of the station. But that means completely cut off, meaning independent air, mm -hmm. independent power, independent systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would think that's a good advantage given what's about to come. Um, and Mr. Kellen. So, as the lockdown happens and you begin to feel very proud of yourself, uh, you hear screaming coming from, well, all over, really. Anyone not wearing uh, EVA suits, which sadly include both you and Kelvin, um, begin to experience a massive amount of discomfort as... I believe the closing speech should now go to the doctor. So, what everyone's experiencing and seeing is your veins start to blacken, your skin gets a little gray, a little tinge of green as well. It's getting harder to breathe, and then for a moment the pain stops. And everyone infected just simply hears... You are now part of me, and I'm a part of you. My demands are simple. Leave me alone, and give me organics to work on. And I won't puncture holes throughout every part of your brain. This is the doctor. Make sure to see me if you have a rash. And I'm going to walk towards Ops and just knock on the door. Did you hear a knock? Something tells me something else has gone af uh, afoot. I go over to the door and push the comm panel. Yes, who is it? House call. It's the doctor. Mm. Might I assume that you've done what I thought you were going to do from the very beginning? You have no worry. They were not going to target you anyways. Hmm. But I have set out and done what I wanted. The station is yours to do as you see fit. As I said, though, to the others, and I will now say to you, simply supply me organics when I need them, and that's it. I will still help and repair everyone else and stay out of the way of the operation of the station. But this is my safety net now. There. And I just sort of turned to Elias. Oh, congratulations, Administrator. It seems you're moving up in the world. It's just what I never wanted. Yes, but think of how much money you'll be making. You have a point. And I believe that is a good place to end the camp or end the session. Real quick, McCall, yes. how much threat do you have? I believe I have about five, if I'm keeping track of it accurately. Uh, I was going to say, if you had like 8 or 13, I would suggest bringing in a Borg Sphere cube. But yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, No, I will yeah. save that uh, for maybe next time we do this. 
if there is a next time. But I would like to thank you guys for playing along. It was a fun um, break from regular Cerberus act, Cerberus shenanigans. So uh, we will be back on I am Friday, February the 7th. So until that time, thanks for listening, stream. Thanks for playing, players. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. See you.